Umar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global. I'm in the O2 Indigo for Ultimate Boxer. With me, light heavyweight Craig Richards and Cheers. heavyweight Jonathan Palata. What's happening? We work this way, right? Yeah, what do you think of this tournament, the Ultimate Boxer? Bit different. It's a different tournament, yeah. It's, it's quick. It reminds me a bit of the amateurs with the free freeze. So you have to like get out, get your feet working, your hands working faster, faster. Pace. You just gotta be busy. If you slip two rounds, you've lost the fight. So if yeah. someone comes out blazing for two rounds and slows down the last round, they've lost the fight. So it's a risky tournament for some of the pros. If you were in it and you had sort of three fights potentially on one night, would it be would it upset you at all? Um, not really. You got to focus on everything and on the task ahead. It's like you know when you box championships in an amateur. Sometimes in like maybe the southeast divs or whatever divs you was in, you box twice in that night. I could be bout night and night bout 14, which has happened to me. Mm. And I didn't focus on, let me save myself in the next fight. You go out there, you win, the, you win. win the then end. I'll go out and I'll win again. Time. And you just focus on the task ahead. Otherwise, oh. you're reserving, you don't get through mm. and you're full of energy and no fight to come. No fight to come, yeah, so, that's the yeah. All right, I'll come to you first, Jonathan. Um, any news on you regarding the fight day? Obviously, you've got your call. Is it your call you're at next? Yeah, I've got your call on yeah. December the 1st. Yeah. Um, Steve Goodwin show. So training camp for that has started, it's commenced and it's going really well. Training hard, training diligently. So hopefully, you know. I saw your eyes wandering there, sorry I had to interrupt nah, you. Nah, nah, they distracted me, they walked past <laughs> enough, man. A lot of girls have been distracting you. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a calm man when it comes yeah, to the ladies. Calm guy? He's the ladies man. No right way, here. I'm the good guy. <laughs> Everyone knows me, I'm a good honest man. Alright, Craig, obviously we saw you out of the copper box, two round, second round stoppage. Um, just been chilling since then? Yeah, like obviously my problem before, I used to like um, two days or one day in, I was back out training hard, hard, hard in camp. I've learned to be more professional now, let the body unwind a little bit, pick it back up to peak for the fight. So just relax a little bit this week, you know, mentally and physically to recharge and go again. Yeah. Early next year, out for you? We're not, we don't know, we'll see. Uh, talk to my management. We'll probably talk to Matt from Eddie Hearn, see um, what they've got in plan. For me, it's just about to fight. I'll leave all, the, all that part to my management and let them make the deals and negotiations. Mm. All right, some big news yesterday. Uh, massive rematch on. Massive. Dillian White, Derek Chisora. Break it down. Go on, how does it go? It's going to be an exciting fight yet again. You know, Dillian's a developing fighter. He gets better and better every fight, proves himself every fight and obviously I've trained Don Caps with him and I know he trains very, very hard mm. so I can, I know he's going to be obviously a lot better than the first fight so I can vouch that he's definitely going to bring more to the table on December 22nd. Jonathan, who did you think won the first fight? First one was very close. It was so close that it could have went either way. I definitely honestly believe it could have went either way. It was a close, tough fight. The boy gave it all on the line and, you know, on the night, Dylan's hand was raised. Mm. But this time, obviously, David training diligent. He obviously wants to make a revenge and make a comeback. And um, immensely, he went wrong in the last fight. And of course, Dylan also wants to prove a point, so he's going to be training immensely as well. So it's going to be another tough fight. And I feel like this time, we want to get a better version of both of them. Mm. They've both come a long way since. And they're both more focused and they've both improved, as we can see from fight after fight. It should be a Christmas cracker. What do you make of David Hay teaming up with Derek Zorro? We never saw that coming. No, it was a very weird one. You know, like, through their whole career, David, Derek and David, they've had their little madnesses. So <laughs> to see them now join up, no one saw that coming. Because even not too long ago, David Hay was trying to get Joe Joyce to fight Derek Zorro. Mm. And then uh, Zorro trying to flip it on him and kind of stuck it on him on ringside. <laughs> yeah. and it was all banter and jokes. And you could see there was real animosity. So a few months later to see him, come back and uh, join forces, hmm. it's kind of like a pride thing. Who would drop their pride to even take that first step? But Chisora obviously admitted he came to David. David had his little think and decided to join teams that made business sense. In boxing, you've got to put your feelings aside a lot and it's a dangerous sport. You're gonna make as much money as you can out of the sport and achieve as much as you can. So sometimes you've got to put your emotions and um, your feelings aside and go and make that money. Yeah, that's right. Boxing is more of a wise man sport than a pride man sport. If you go in there with pride, that's how you get knocked out also, like you hurt your opponent and then you go in there prideful thinking you've got him, you get clipped. Same as the business side of it. You can't let pride be in the way of you progressing business and financially wise. So they both realise, you know, we're here to do business and we're here to hold a legacy and make the most money we can out of it. So they came together and teamed up. They're both serious about move. the sport. They're both serious about the sport. They both want to make a lot of money and they want to put on exciting fights. And you know, when you've got two serious fighters, like, it's exciting, you know? The fans have got something to look forward to. You know mm. that both warriors are going to go out and put it on yeah. the line. So that's it, what boxing needs. It can't be a bad fight. Um, 
Rumours that the winner could potentially face Anthony Joshua April 13th at Wembley. How would they fare either against Anthony Joshua, you think? It would be a good, 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 good challenge for Joshua. Because like I said, they're both improving and, and improved fighters. So whoever wins out of them team will give Joshua a tough fight. Mm. That's without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. And I think we all know that. Mm. So it's awesome to see. So hopefully the winner out of them two does get an opportunity to mm. fight Joshua. Let's say Dylan comes out on top. Um, which is obviously the result you want uh, on December 22nd. If he gets that rematch with Joshua, um, how does it go, Craig? How does the fight go? It'll be a very exciting fight. You know, the first one was exciting. Mm. Um, of course, his day's getting down the line more. Um, fitness um, prevailed and whatever. And, um, and obviously, it can't Joshua come through in the end. Um, obviously both since then they've both prevailed they've both increased their stamina fitness they're two complete different fighters now so we're in for a way more exciting fight this time because we've got two athletes this time mm. in the ring ready to trade it out mm. should be good listen we look forward to December 22nd um, we'll see what happens and uh, look forward to see what happens with you two as well me too can't wait <laughs> alright man IFL special with Craig Richards and Jonathan Pilata cheers we'll catch up soon we will